Hi, my name is Francisco Arriaga. I'm a uh, soil science extension specialist with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I'll be discussing now um, another topic on soil and water management, uh, soil erosion. So let's get into it. So we know that erosion, soil erosion, impacts many different things, uh, but we know it affects uh, air and water quality and obviously productivity. And so these uh, effects are, uh, on productivity are related a lot of times to the loss of organic matter, nutrients, and uh, reduction in productivity from those. Uh, but also the other thing that happens long term is that the depth of the soil profile, so the depth of um, soil that roots have to explore, it decreases because you're removing the surface soil. Uh, other issues then, if you have severe erosion, you can have gullies and rills that form, so that we obviously would take the manage some management to get them out of the field or, or try to uh, address those issues. Uh, further down the line, then we have issues with sedimentation in the waterway, uh, diversion terraces and, and things like that, so th that's not a good scenario either. Um, in some uh, areas of the state, such as in the central sands where we have more issues with wind erosion, uh, there can actually be uh, damage to the plants from the sand blasting effect of those uh, sand particles uh, being hit, carried by the, by the wind, hitting the crop. So let's talk about water erosion in a little bit more detail. So looking at the water erosion process, it's actually a three-step process. So the first thing that happens is detachment. So that's caused by the impact of the raindrop. It uh, hits the soil surface and it'll uh, detach uh, sand or silt particles or clay particles uh, out of the soil. So if you recall on your basic soils, if you had a soil that has a good aggregate stability, those soils will actually resist this detachment uh, force a lot more than uh, weaker soils. So once that soil particle is detached, um, that particle can be transported or will be transported and will move from the field and it will get deposited. So the other two steps of uh, water erosion will be the transport and then the deposition of that particle. That deposition could be in the field, in the same field, it could be in a waterway or it could be deposited in a stream or lake. So um, in my view, once that particle gets detached, we are already uh, losing the battle with uh, soil erosion. So you might have heard of the uh, USLE or the Universal Soils Equation. I think it's a great uh, way to look at uh, things that we can do and how we can manage uh, erosion by water. And you can see the formula here in the bottom where we have the soil loss uh, in tons per acre equal to these different factors, R, K, L, S, C, and P. R being the erosive force of the rainfall, water, and the runoff, so the amount and intensity. Uh, K is the erodibility factor, also how erodible your soil might be. L, S is the slope, length, and steepness. Uh, C would be your cover and management, so uh, residue on the surface, what type of crops you're growing. And then P would be your control practices, and we'll uh, touch on, on some of these as we go along. Uh, the USLEs have been revised right now, and it's uh, called the Revised Universal Soils Equation 2. Uh, and it's a little bit more complicated than this, but I think this uh, USLE concept helps us uh, look at erosion and kind of think about how we can manage soils to reduce erosion. So in Wisconsin, usually uh, what we call the tolerable soil erosion, or that soil erosion equation, uh, what I show you, the soil loss, uh, it, may, it varies anywhere between 3 and 5 tons per acre per year. That's what we call tolerable or allowable. However, you know, me, I have a hard time, even as a scientist, wrapping my head around that, that value. What, what does five tons of soil per acre look like? So if you were to calculate that on a uh, square footage basis, that's about 3.7 ounces of soil. So if you were to take a floor tile, a 12 by 12 floor tile, all you would need is about a teaspoon of soil, and that would be equivalent to five tons of soil per acre. So as you can see, it doesn't take a whole lot to lose uh, beyond those uh, uh, losses that we call tolerable. Now, taking it another step further, if we look at the value of the fertilizer, just the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in one ton of soil, we can see that it could it could have quite a dramatic impact. So, looking at a soil, let's say that is just in the optimum range, so that right in the middle of of, of a, a nutrient range. Uh, you could be losing with each ton of soil about 2 pounds of nitrogen, 9 pounds of P2O5, and 31 pounds of K2O. So if you that up, uh, multiply that by 5, you know, and you then try to replace a fertilizer, it can have a fairly large economic impact. So when we're looking at uh, soil erosion by water, we know that um, residue, crop residues are our best defense. 
and the amount of residue that we have on the soil surface directly relates to the amount of erosion. So here's an example on this graph here on the left side of the screen. Uh, residue cover on the horizontal axis, on the vertical is the soil reduction. We know that about 30 percent uh, residue cover will reduce erosion to about 50 percent. Uh, on the right side, I have an example or looking at examples of corn and soybean residue. What, do, what does 30 percent residue look like? Uh, here in the surface, on the top one, uh, we have 25 percent. That's pretty close to 30. You can see it doesn't take a lot of residue and we can make some uh, nice uh, steps forward towards reducing erosion. Uh, 50 percent, even 50 percent uh, residue doesn't look like a whole lot. 75 percent and 100 percent residue. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about erosion management. Uh, so what practice, what things can we do to control or, or manage erosion? Again, like I said before, 30 uh, percent uh, residue on the soil surface can reduce erosion by 50 to 60 percent. Obviously, that's going to depend on, on different conditions. Um, cover crops uh, can be a great way to uh, protect the soil when it's the most uh, vulnerable. vulnerable. Um, and it also helps uh, recycle nutrients and other benefits uh, with biological benefits and such that we we uh, we're aware of. Um, another, another way to control erosion would be by uh, doing tillage on the contour. Uh, this could be uh, quite beneficial. And another way would be uh, using contour strips for cropping. Uh, and so basically you alternate um, strips of, of different crops, including sods, uh, to break that slope on the, on this, on this, on the landscape. Uh, other ways uh, or different structures that could be used uh, for erosion control include uh, diversion ter uh, diversions, uh, terraces, uh, waterways. So a lot of this, if you think about it, look at uh, think about uh, think back to that USLE equation that we talked about. What they're trying to do is uh, modify some of those factors. In this case, is the LS uh, factor, the slope. Uh, so in this case, this practice is aimed to reduce the slope length, um, divert. Uh, water safe, safer, so they're trying to avoid any confluence of water or concentrated flow. Uh, also, another way of, of um, improving um, erosion management is to avoid runoff on, on feedlots or barnyards where we know that that area is going to be compacted, so it's going to have very poor infiltration and we have more water moving out of those areas. Uh, crop rotations can be uh, important too to control erosion if you include a, a crop that has a lot of residue or uh, different root structure will help hold that soil uh, in place and uh, ultimately the best way to control erosion is actually using a combination of different practices um, so trying to reduce the um, tillage um, including uh, residue management techniques including cover crops if you have steep uh, slopes uh, contour uh, cropping and all those those type of things as a whole as a package can be very effective in reducing erosion so it's not, these are not new techniques. It's basically back to the basics. We know that these are very effective and have been used for decades. Again, I have to um, uh, reiterate the importance of crop residues. It is the best uh, tool that we have for controlling erosion. Um, simply being is because it's protecting that soil surface from the impact of raindrops. So it's uh, trying to reduce or avoid that first step of erosion, if you, if you recall, which is the detachment of the uh, soil particles. So it's very, very important uh, to protect that soil surface. Uh, here are some examples of different uh, erosion control practices, uh, just for uh, your, your review. Uh, here's our, uh, some contour uh, strips, as you can see. Um, they basically follow the lay of the land or the landscape. Uh, these are buffer strips, a little bit difficult to see, but you see there every so often there's these uh, strips with a, uh, a grass uh, buffer area that it's helping break down that slope and reduce the slope length. So it would, if you have any runoff, it would slow that uh, water um, as it goes down the slope. Here are terraces. Essentially, the terraces are, again, breaking that slope, but also changing the slope of that, of that field. Um, so it's kind of a, a, a double effect that we see here. And um, repairing buffers are kind of, in my, in my view, kind of a last ditch effort in that they're going to be right, very important, but they're going to be right next to a creek. So if you have any, any water uh, moving from the field that is going to end up in that creek and it's carrying any sediments, these uh, buffer strips are very effective at reducing the, the speed of that water and then allowing those particles to settle out, out of that water and not reaching the stream. Uh, another important one that I um, have to, to really stress is the uh, use of uh, grass waterways. 
Um, it, they're very effective at removing water, excess water from the field uh, in areas where we get concentrated flow, and they also help um, to avoid uh, gullies and rills in those areas. So they're very, very effective at controlling erosion in specific areas. Um, I realize they can be sometimes a little uh, difficult to manage and can be a problem, but um, they are very important, very critical for erosion management. Uh, now I just want to briefly talk about wind erosion. Uh, like I uh, said in the past, uh, this is an issue mainly from the central sands part of the state. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, it's a very uh, agriculturally active uh, area in the state. And so wind erosion is a little bit different than water erosion. Uh, Again, in this case, is the action of the wind hitting uh, the soil surface. And so what happens is that as the wind hits the soil, uh, particles get suspended. Uh, some particles actually, that's particles suspended can just fly off essentially uh, great distances. Particles that are a little bit heavier will uh, do what we uh, call saltation. So they basically are bouncing off the surface of the soil. Or they can move by what we call creep. So they're just rolling on the surface of the soil. Uh, but if you imagine things rolling or, or bouncing off the surface of the soil, they'll actually going to have an impact on breaking off all their particles, on, on uh, breaking them loose and, and having them being carried by the wind. Um, it can be a big, big problem. I, I have mentioned in the past the issue with uh, sandblasting on the crops, but it can present other problems. Wind erosion is not only a, a problem uh, for crop production, but it's also a public issue, uh, where as you can see in this scenario, um, a road being completely covered in, in dust particles from, from different fields, so that obviously presents a hazard for driving because of the poor visibility. So this concludes our section on uh, solar erosion. Um, I will direct you towards the publication A3588, Management of Wisconsin Soils, if you want to further review other sections or, or go in a little bit more detail on solar erosion. Mm -hmm.